All right, so I hope you're prepared for a, a dramatic shift in topics. I'm very grateful for the first presentation. I enjoyed it so much. And uh, what I'm presenting today is not really representative of my research that I usually do. Um, usually, I am an economic geographer uh, contributing and co-developing a project called Relational Economic Geography, focusing on um, the economic foundations and consequences of social institutions, um, and also looking at um, intra-organizational as well as inter-organizational networks, trying to contribute to social network theory. This is what I usually do. But then your telephone rings and your rector says, um, I have a project for you. Can I ask you a favor? Uh, we are um, not in a situation of friendly collaboration in the triple helix, but we are in a moment of struggle with government for funding. Um, so, a, a, about a year ago, this is the first appearance in the uh, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, Germany's uh, most important daily newspaper. The first appearance in October last year, you see two portraits. One is our uh, Federal Minister of Science and Arts, um, Mrs. Bauer, and the other one is the rector of the University of Ulm, another university in the federal state of Baden-Württemberg. The two faces struggling for the future budget, basic budget, um, for the nine public universities in the, in the federal state of Baden-Württemberg. So they were <coughs> looking for the weapons to start the battle. And one of those weapons was an economic impact study. So what I'm going to present today is uh, quantifying, trying to quantify in money terms, in real currency, um, the short-term economic impact of nine universities in the region of Baden-Württemberg. The region of Baden-Württemberg, just giving it numbers, would be number 22 in a world ranking of the largest economies of the world. It's not a small economy. And doing an impact study of universities in such, at such a territorial scale is something that has not been done and never at the rigor that we have done it. So it was a long pro project. It, uh, it included hard work at the nine universities' um, accounting departments, um, trying to fulfill the requirements that we gave them for data, to regionalize data. So, and I'm not going in the 30 minutes I have, I really won't go into the details of the methodology, because it's very old. It's, uh, it's regional science uh, methodology, regional impact analysis. Um, it uses regional multiplier models, uh, and it's all very consolidated. There are a number of methodological challenges that we have addressed, but I think this is not the place to discuss them. If you want to discuss them, we can do that later on. I'd like to give, before I start, full credit again to Robert Panitz and Christian Wutke, who just presented themselves, um, who have really contributed very strongly to, um, to the methodological work and also to the collection of the primary data in this, in this uh, impact study. So we're talking about policy making or policy manipulating uh, with the help of um, scientific research. Okay, so the first basic question of this talk is, what is the economic impact of a public university on its region in monetary terms? Um, there are two quality risks in, uh, in, in venturing such a, a, a measurement assessment. The first one is um, to get the real data, to get valid original data, so the primary data. Universities spend money. They buy paper, computers, catering services, they pay for conferences. So there's a, a whole range of consumption that the university does. Then the university pays salaries to all its employees, and these salaries are used for consumption. And thirdly, students, 30,000 just in the, at the University of Heidelberg, dispose of some sort of income wherever it comes from parents, own work, other funds, um, that, which is also consumed. Students consume this money in the region of the university because they study at the university. Universities attract population to migrate for a period of years to study there. So we have three financial streams that add to an increase in the autonomous demand of a region. But the money that we spend whenever we order a book as professors through Amazon, that money leaves the region. There is no benefit for the region. When we go to the local retail store and buy the book, there is a local retail profit for the region. 
So what we have to do methodologically is to discriminate very clearly or to regionalize very precisely the expenses of salaries, student consumption, and of the expenses that the university does. That is an effort which is usually not done. Economists who use the same method to do that usually estimate a regionalized factor of, of, gener of, of overall consumption, which means they already start with artificially estimated data. So what we do, and that was one year, it, it was the lion's share of the work really, was to create valid regionalized data. And it was much work for the universities who, who uh, took part in this. Okay, the second quality risk in such an analysis is to, and this you can only estimate, but provide the best estimate for the multiplier effects that this primary regional effect, this, this immediate defect creates. And that is something that you can do uh, in two ways. You can estimate it through a, a generalized formula, the Keynesian multiplier, which underestimates the real regional effect. Or you can do it through the system of national accounting, using input-output tables, which also underestimates the effect. So what we've done here, thanks to the two colleagues, is uh, create um, a combined multiplier analysis that is a better estimate um, for, for the real effects. Okay, I will also demonstrate that um, solving the problem and giving a number to the economic impact is something that is not really satisfying and you will feel this. When the number comes out you say, okay, that's the number. What does it mean? So in the second part of the talk I try to uh, elaborate a bit on what does that mean uh, in economic terms. Um, the talk that you've given, Entrepreneurial University, and the discussion we had very clearly points to the long-term impact of academia, education, and basic research. And, um, but I will have to skip this out for a moment. We talk only exclusively about short-term measurable monetary effects. Okay. Um, the landscape of higher education in Baden-Württemberg, one of 16 federal states um, um, in Germany, um, knows a great diversity of different institutional types of universities. So there is a conflict in terms, what is a university? We do have universities of applied sciences. We do have university pedagogical universities, basically forming teachers for primary and secondary school. We do have universities for public administration. We do have universities for art and design. These are very particular, often small-scale universities that are not taken into consideration here. The um, organizational foundation to represent the important universities only includes nine, the red dots on this map. So nine universities, Mannheim, Heidelberg, Karlsruhe, Stuttgart, Hohenheim, Konstanz, Ulm, uh, Freiburg. These are the ones. So nine in 80, that's only 10% of the number of universities we, we, we could balance overall. But those nine universities form about 50% of all the students in the federal state. And moreover, and that is the real impressive number, these 10% of the institutions generate 90% of the entire third party funding within this, the state of Baden-Württemberg. So we are talking about a very, very scooed distribution in this, uh, in this landscape of organizations. Okay, uh, very quickly, uh, and not going too deeply in the, met in the methodology, what are the terms that we uh, use and what are the outcomes that we calculate? I will do this very briefly only for the first one, the demand effect. What is the gross production value, the increase of the gross production value in the regional economy caused exclusively by the autonomous demand of the university and its members? So the university spends money, a big part of this never reaches the region. Tax goes to the, uh, for example, um, goes, to, uh, goes to the state. Um, um, supplies from outside the region don't reach the region, so we have to distract this. So the gross effect will never be the real, the real value to, um, uh, to judge. So we first have to calculate the direct effect, which is the regionalized money that really uh, arrives at the region. When a university um, consumes paper, that paper has to be produced. So 
um, companies that produce paper um, have to create or to, to supply more capacity. And they will ask for more supplies to their suppliers. So we have a production effect. And that is what, uh, what describes the multiplier impact of this increasing demand. This is the indirect effect um, resulting from the autonomous uh, increase in demand. But then there is a simultaneous second multiplied effect. And that is the company that, that manufactures paper not only asks for more supplies to be able to produce more paper, but they also employ more people who earn salaries. And their salaries also increase the demand in the region for additional services, cars, um, real estate, and other things. So the um, initial impetus really distributes along the inter-industry division of labor in a region through all sectors. So the challenge here was to calculate the simultaneous effects of both labor market increases and production increases and integrate them into one. So we do it for demand, we do it for gross value added, which is the better economic concept to study the within region value creation. We do it for the income effects, we do it for the number of employees that the universities in Baden-Württemberg account for directly and indirectly, and we do it for the tax earnings that the federal state as such has. German tax system is extremely complicated, um, but if you allow for a simplification, um, you can learn that the, the important taxes, income tax and value-added tax, these two taxes account for roughly 70% of all tax income of, of Germany, these two taxes are distributed nearly equally between the federal state and the national government. So roughly we can say the tax, that, the tax revenues that are generated, about 50% of them go to the federal state. Analyses have been more precise, but that's to learn about the system. Okay. Okay, this is the simplified form of, of trying to, to explain the way I, I really skip it and show the results and you will see, well, the results don't really help. Okay, we get some numbers. Um, the nine universities in Baden-Württemberg and their members, students and staff, spend about 4.6 billion euros a year, grossly, of which 2.5, um, 2.5 billion um, directly reach the region and cause multiplier effects that in the end lead to a total effect of 3.4 billion euros. So, what do we learn? <laughs> okay, so we get numbers, we miss the reference. What can we learn from this? It's really difficult. Um, but that's what policy asks for. What's the impact? But in order to be able to judge, to qualify the quantified impact, we need comparison. Or we need theory, or we need reference. Either of the two. <clears throat> okay, before I go into that, that's the, that's the, the, um, the total outcome. And that's something you can, you can hand over to rectors to argue for better funding in the future. Basically stating that um, the basic funding of, of the nine universities in Baden-Württemberg is about two billion. Consumption generates tax, value-added tax, of nearly 20%. And um, income also comes with tax. The federal state earns about half of this tax. So at the same time that the federal state gives two billion, in the same year, it earns uh, about 300 million. So the net funding of the universities is really only 1.7 billion. The universities raise money, third-party uh, third funding. So if you take um, third-party funding in, into account, and if you take into account the, the student consumption that is attracted to Baden-Württemberg and other details that I'm not going into, you end up with a total regional impact of about 3.8 billion euros. And that is 2.3 times um, the amount that the, that the federal state initially puts into the educational system. Um, that's any kind of um, research funding that comes from the European Union, that comes from the German Science Foundation, and that also and that might come from Klaus Chira and private foundations or business. Okay, any unconditional uh, research funding. 
third party funding. Um, so you see, the model we've created is an aggressive model. And we were asked to be aggressive, try to drive up the multiplier. And we did so. But we feel responsible for this, and we can really defend it. So um, what you learn is you give a money, uh, a net money. That is, you give a money, you give uh, one euro thirty, which is a net euro. And for that net euro that the federal state gives to the universities, its regional federal economy earns 2.3 euros, 2 euros 30 every year. That's a value. So now, the next question is, how can we qualify such an economic impact? We have a number, nothing else. Okay, the number, and, and it's according to your expectations, whether it's uh, more than expected or less than expected. What is an objectified reference? And the best way to do it is to ask, okay, how could we better use the money? Let's try to have a better impact. And how would that work? So before we can respond to that question, we first look at why does it work in the case of universities? What drives the regional impact of a university? And there are three of them. Two of them can be strategically managed. The third cannot. The first one is attract students. Attracting students means you attract additional population to spend their disposable income in your region. So, um, very difficult to measure, extremely difficult to measure, but in Germany we know with every registered student, we know whether he received his Abitur, the admission to the university, within Baden-Württemberg or not. So those who achieved their admission in Baden-Württemberg are not migrants to the universities. And the difference to those who study in Baden-Württemberg is the net migration rate of students. And, and this way we can calculate and multiply about, uh, what's this, uh, about 400 million euros that every year additionally come into the region only because of the attraction of students. What other public sector authority or organization does attract permanent migration? Can you think of any? Firemen, a police academy, I can't think of anyone, okay? A hospital, but that's short term, not long term, usually. Okay, the second effect, which is part of the big policy in Germany at the moment. Universities are strongly encouraged to increase at a maximum the number of third party funding. And that le leads into a critical discourse about also about the triple helix model at, uh, model at some point. So this is a distribution um, the abbreviations go for the 16 federal states of Germany. I'm not going through them. Um, and you see that this distribution compares basic funding at the horizontal axis and additional third-party funding, the money that the universities rose in competitive, uh, in, in competitive struggle for additional third-party funding. And you see the relation is very stable, independent of the size of, of, the, of the different regions. So smaller regions, like the city of Bremen, has about the same proportion of third-party funding to base funding as Bavaria, one of the biggest states in Germany, or North Rhine-Westphalia. So there seems to be not a rule, but there seems to be a regularity in the distribution um, across all the universities in Germany. But then you see very few federal states that are above the line, who are um, disproportionately successful in attracting a large share of additional third, third party funding. And that is Baden-Württemberg, and that is also um, Berlin, the capital, and that is Saxonia. Okay? Only three of them. The rest is really exactly on the distribution or below. Remember that I said we have 80 universities in, in, in the federal state, of which only nine are the public universities, the, 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 the public universities, general universities. And those nine universities made up for 90% of third party funding. So if we build two groups and say let's look only at the nine universities, they would be here, whereas the other uh, 70, uh, organization, uh, other 70 um, uh, universities in the, in the federal state would be here, down here. So it's extremely asymmetrically distributed. Okay, so f um, in general you could say for every euro that a university in this region gets from the state, it earns another 50 cent every year. 
So, and that levels up the capacity of the universities. And of course, that is spending, it's consumption and salaries. And that goes into the region and multiplies the effect. What other public organization can you think of that has such a leverage on its base funding um, through the government? The third leverage that dr drives up this, or that, that, uh, that accounts for this impact, is something that you cannot really affect. It's where you, where you are located and how big you grow your region. If you looked only at the University of Heidelberg, the city of Heidelberg and its neighboring counties, uh, it would be a very small region. And of course that region would, would import most of its commodities and supplies. So it would lose a lot of money to other regions. If you grow your region big enough, that region becomes more and more autonomous. Imports become less and less. And the less you import, the more value you create within the region. Um, and that's good for a very large economy as Baden-Württemberg. It's a positive factor influencing this, this strong impact. But then again, there is something bad in the culture of this region in Germany. People living in this region don't like to spend money. They save money. If they spend money, they buy insurance. Okay? So um, the, the saving rate is amongst the highest rates all over Germany in this region. And people who save their money and don't spend them really don't contribute to the regional economy. So um, if the population in this country would spend more, the impact would even grow higher. Okay? So, and so there are many other factors that go into this calculus. All right. So, um, when we talk, all, all these, the whole approach of this measurement is based on the logical notion of counterfactuality. We can only calculate the impact of a university if we argue that without the university, exactly that impact would not be available in the economy. Is that a, an appropriate assumption in such a big re region? If government did not finance nine universities with two billion euros, would they do something else with the money? And that's the real question. So what we try to do, and that's why I say research gap, what we try to do is not only calculate the absolute impact, okay, because a politician might argue, let's close the universities and build Germany's biggest police academy in Stuttgart. It would also have an impact. Any spending does have an impact. So what's the difference? And that is the differential impact analysis, which is usually not done. So we try to do it, and, and I think that is a measure that helps not only quantify, but also qualify the real contribution that universities do in those monetary terms. Okay, there are several scenarios. Scenario one, um, it's embarrassing to say that, but um, within the German discourse, we are in crisis, although we know that in European context, we are not in economic crisis. But um, if you ignore international news, we are also in crisis, and uh, public debt is increasing. So um, the new government has to defend any spending, and what it says, and that's the argument they're having at the moment, is we socialize the debt, and education and research have to participate in this socialized cost of reducing public debt. So scenario one is, let's save 10% of the public funding. What happens if we, for the next period, um, it's a contract for, I think, seven years, the Solidarity Pact. For the next seven years, we, um, uh, we provide the universities with 10% less of the budget. They're earning their third party funding anyway, so they can do without. How would this impact the regional economy? And it would exactly impact it by the multiplier of 2.3, basically, if, you, if, if we calculate it for the net funding. So, scenario one is, instead of giving 2 billion, we only give uh, 2.84 billion as a base funding. And when we use this now for our regional impact analysis, well, we have a deficit of about 370 million euros. That's what the regional economy of Baden-Württemberg would lose. Government would save money, but the regional product would decrease, um, disproportionately, of course. Okay, that is not very realistic. It is more realistic to say uh, there are other interest groups in our society 
who have better claims than university. For example, social security um, or social services, health services and so on. And there is a competition between the different uses for the public budget. So let us not save the 10% of the money, let us just take 10% of the money away from the universities and give it to other uses. In this case, we have to calculate what these other uses impact would be and discount that impact from the impact of the universities. And if we do this, and I'm, I think I'm, I should not go, again, not go too much into detail, there, are, um, there is a maximum and a minimum um, possible impact that you could have, but even in the best use, in the best alternative use you can imagine, which is only providing employment, giving salaries and those salaries multiplying into the region, um, uh, even in, in this case there would be a deficit of about 120 million in impact. And that is something, this comparative observation is a way to, in a way, qualify the real impact that universities have. We could not think of a better use that competes with giving the, um, the money it, to the universities. And please remember what I said at the beginning, we only talk about short term, we're not talking about long term innovation, the invention of the paper and the invention of print. We don't talk about these things, we just talk about year to year uh, net economic benefits. Okay, so there is this, I hope, famous or, or representative uh, um, um, graph that um, gives credit to all the different outcomes that universities produce, which are so difficult to measure in monetary terms. But just to give and to close with one more concrete example from colleagues who did research in Canada, what they did was um, to analyze on the long term through five decades the discounted value, discounted means the time-corrected currency value, the discounted value of all public government funding for basic research in the natural sciences compared to the discounted aggregate contribution of all university spin-offs that occurred in the century to Canadian gross domestic product. That's the relationship. The relationship is between total impact, which is what is the contribution of a university spin-off, private enterprise, over the years to Canadian GDP, divided by the total funding that the government had provided in the same time frame to um, a specific natural science. And of course, as you go back in history, so the earlier you have the foundation, of course, the higher is the multiplier, because you have more years of growth of these private enterprises. And it reaches up to a, a proportion of, of six. So you give one dollar of public funding to physics in the year uh, 1970, and by 2000, the spin-offs that resulted from that public research, of course unplannable in an unplanned way, but there are spin-offs, have an aggregated leverage of six dollars upon that one dollar. And you can also calculate this for the tax revenues, because the state always earns in every moment when money moves through value-added tax and income tax and corporate tax and other taxes. So every dollar that the Canadian government gives to public funding on the long run generates an immediate discounted return of $1.30. You can always doubt uh, details of these estimates, but they are interesting estimates to, um, in, in such a policy-oriented debate that we're having at the moment, when you try to defend the money and try to argue that not only in the short term, but above all, on the long term, as we all know, universities have a definite um, and sometimes quantifiable economic impact. Um, I'm closing, not reading out this quote, which basically says, even if there is no tangible relation between an enterprise and a university in a region, that enterprise, when asked, says that the university is key to the economic success of the region, even in the absence of immediate relationships. Thank you very much. <laughs>